Hello everyone, it's Abdullah here and uh, um, today I'm going to cover the lower limb anatomy uh, for the MRCS exam and um, it will be covered in a systematic way starting by osteology and that's all the bones starting from distal to proximal starting partial bones and um, uh, talking about the arches of the foot as you can see in here and then the joint and then the ankle joint then go to the tibia and fibula and femur and the hip bone as well and then we have the muscles, uh, and by that we're going to ask a few questions like questions and answers and how to identify a few muscles and the compartments of the leg, which are four compartments, anterior, posterior, superficial, posterior, deep, and lateral. And then we're going to go back to the thigh, and then we'll go back to gluteal regions as well. So as you can see here, these are the muscles of the lower limb, and it has a few questions like 11 questions. And then, or maybe a little bit more, sorry, actually, it's like 19, 20 questions. And then ligaments. And um, we need to identify a few cadaveric ligaments. Um, and um, just a few questions as well about the deltoid ligament in a little bit more detail. And um, um, uh, ending by the ligaments that support the hip joint. And then uh, nerves. Um, and um, these are basically asking about um, the femoral nerve from the top and um, uh, uh, you know the uh, um, t the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve and the sciatic nerve and detail as well. Um, and we need to go through all of this and some condition like neuralgia parathetica. And then we, we need to add a few blood vessels as well. And uh, we're going to talk about the dorsalis pedis from the peripheral and then posterior tibial and anterior tibial and all these lovely structures all the way up to the femoral artery in the top and the femoral vein with softness vein as well and talking about something called vascular lacuna and then we have a few applied anatomy or regional anatomy so it's applied or regional anatomy so we need to talk about the compartments of um, syndrome and also the some triangles the femoral triangle the femoral sheath and the femoral canal the femoral ring and the um, um, Go into the adductor canal and popliteal fossa. Um, all right. So these are the our table of, of uh, content. So we started by having a bone and surrounding this bone with some muscles, and um, we got some blood vessels as well and some nerves. And these bones are connected together by joints, and also uh, these joints uh, uh, are kept in place by ligaments. That's why we need to know more about these ligaments. So these are the titles that we're going to uh, discuss um, in this series of the lower limb anatomy. So starting by the osteology, we're going to start from distal to proximal. So we have starting on this one, this is the, the foot bones or the tarsal bones. Okay. So very quickly, we need to identify the key features in this one. So obviously in A, uh, we're looking at the medial side. So in this one, you're looking from the medial side. And on B, you're looking from the lateral side. Okay. So the big bone that we can identify here, this is the calcaneum. Okay. The calcaneum. And this one is obviously the talus muscle. It has some other structures as well, some, you know, minor structures or substructures, but this big one is the talus, all right? And you have here, number 15 is the navicular bone, okay? And you have uh, number 10, which is the medial cuneiform, all right? So 10 is the medial cuneiform, like that. And obviously this is, the the metatarsal bones, which is number three and number twenty as well. These are the metatarsal bones. So what is number two? Number two is the cuboid bone. So if you look here, this is the cuboid bone. Fifteen is the navicular bone, and you have said number ten is medial cuneiform. Uh, so five intermediate cuneiform, and six is lateral cuneiform. Okay. So so this is just to identify the bigger picture on here. So you have number thirteen of the calcaneum. And um, uh, uh, um, this one, this big one, there is no marking in it now, but this big one is the talus. And here you have 15 navicular bone, and you have two, which is the cupoid, and you have the cuneiform, which is 10, 5, and 6, and you have the mesodorsals, and so on.
So starting by the calcaneal uh, substructures. So you have number one on the calcaneum, it's called the anterior tubercle. The anterior tubercle, okay? So this is number one, anterior tubercle. And number eight is called the, the lateral process. Obviously, we're looking from the lateral side. So this is the lateral process of the calcaneum. Um, 17 is called the perineal trochlea. Perineal trochlea. And um, uh, you also, on the other side, you have the medial surface and something that is very important, probably that's the only thing that you need to know really, something called sustentaculum tili. Sustentaculum tili. So, well, this is the calcaneum, that's the medial surface, that's a sustentaculum tili. Tili, that's the only two things that you really need to know on the calcaneum, but the other one is just for a guide for you. Uh, this is the anterior tubercle and um, uh, this one is the lateral process and this is the perineal trochlea. But what you need to know is 18, sustentaculum to lie, and also 13, which is the medial surface of the um, calcaneus. All right, so moving forward, we talked about the talus. We need to identify a few structures in the talus, and these will be the head and the, the malleolar surface and also the neck. So starting from this one, so four looks like the head. Okay, so four looks like the head of the uh, talus, and 16 looks like the neck. Here we're looking from the medial side. So this is the medial malleolar surface, number 11 is the medial malleolar surface, as you see here. Okay, and 14 is something called the medial tubercle. Medial tubercle. And finally, on number nine, nine is on the back, right? So you have your posterior tubercle as well, okay? Uh, posterior or lateral tubercle, okay? Uh, posterior or lateral tubercle. So that's number nine. So this is the talus and the um, substructures of the talus. You have four at the head and 16 at the neck, 11 at the malleolus, and you have 14 is the medial tubercle and nine, which is more evident on the lateral. So if that's why this is the lateral process of the mal, uh, the the um, talus. Okay, the vecular bone. We talked about the navicular bone was number fifteen, and you had a sort of extension from a down below. It's called the um, uh, tuberosity or tubercle of the navicular bone. We talked about cuboid bone and the cuneiforms, and we identified the cuneiforms. The metatarsal. Um, we talked about number 20, which is the base of fifth metatarsal, and it's an attachment for peroneus tertius muscle and um, uh, peroneus previs as well. So we're coming to this, and we're going to talk about it in detail. So the next part is really to talk about an important um, uh, um, thing that is called the foot arches. So the arches of the foot, so the arches of the foot, which can be divided into one is the medial arch, and two is the lateral arch and three is the transverse arch all right so three arches that are found in the foot and what we need to identify is what are the bones forming these arches and what are the ligaments that keeps them together and what are the muscles that passes behind it we need to identify each of those uh, and each of those arches all right so starting by the major longitudinal arch as you can see here so obviously this is the calcaneus, all right, the calcaneus. And you have the talus as well. So as you see, this is the arch, that's the medial longitudinal arch on the medial side. So you have the talus, and after the talus you have the navicular bone. And on the medial side you have the medial three cuneiform. Or basically it's the three cuneiform. And finally, you have the medial three metatarsals. Metatarsals, right? The medial three metatarsals. So these are these are the bony structures that form uh, this uh, ligament. So you have the calcaneus, and you have the talus, and you have the navicular bone. You have three cuneiforms and the medial three metatarsals. And these are in total 
around nine bones. And then you will have uh, ligaments in this area. You'll have something called long plantar ligament, which should be sort of attachment down there, and then shorter plantar ligament, and then a spring ligament in there. So you have three ligaments. It's exactly like a trait, and we're going to see in, tease them later on in different pictures. So you have long plantar ligament, and also short plantar ligament, and finally you have the spring ligament as well. Okay, so this is the medial longitudinal arch. So what about the lateral longitudinal arch? So it's basically we'll be looking from the other side. So if you look here, this is the lateral longitudinal arch. So again, you have the calcaneum and you have the talus as well. Okay, and you have the cupoid, obviously the cuneiform, they all went to the medial arch. So this is the medial side. And you have the lateral two metatarsals, the lateral two metatarsals. What about the, the, the ligaments that they have? They have the long and short plantar ligament. It's still the same two ligaments, which are, again, will be sort of A, all right? So long and short plantar ligament, and it has uh, around three muscles, peroneus longus, peroneus previs, and short plantar muscles. And the other one, we had tibialis anterior muscle and posterior flexor halus longus and peroneus longus muscle. I think we have better images that can specify to you these all of these structures, but we're gonna have to jump a little bit to um, other areas. So yeah, for example, uh, looking at um, this one, probably the this one. So you have here, um, obviously you're looking from the medial side. Uh, this is the deltoid ligament. That is the deltoid ligament. And you have here number 18 is called the spring ligament. And number 17 is called short plantar ligament. And number 14 is called long plantar ligament. So both of them would be on the medial and the lateral longitudinal arch. So when you look here from the other side, obviously we talked about 14 on the top here. That this is the long plantar ligament. Long plantar ligament. And here we're looking from the lateral side. We're going to cover the rest of this. Uh, um, a cadaver dissection, uh, but we're going to come back to it later on. Yeah, so here we talked about the uh, medial and lateral longitudinal arch. However, there is a transverse arch which is sort of would be going sort of here, all right? So we're taking a section in this area, so you'll be looking at all these metatarsal bones. So it's the base of the five metatarsal bones, and it contains the peroneus longus muscle. All right, so we need to also to identify a few joints, and I'm going to use this lovely uh, uh, diagram to identify these joints. Obviously, you have a joint in here, so a joint is, is basically a connection between two bones. So you have a joint in here, which connects between the talus and also the calcaneum. Um, uh, uh, well, so you can call it talocalcaneal joint, but the, we have a different name for it, which is called subtalar joint okay subtalar joint and you do have another joint between the talus and the calcaneum and the navicular bone which will be on this side so it's basically a so you have the talus and calcaneum and the navicular bone so this one is called talo calcaneo navicular joint that's another joint all right and also the last joint that we have is called uh, between the calcaneum and the cupoid, this one. So it's called calcaneo cupoid joint. So we have three joints that we need to identify their type and their movements and what can move them as well. All right. So we have, uh, or, or what forms it actually. So we have the subtalar joint. So it's basically between the inferior surface of the talus and the superior surface of the calcaneum muscle. If you remember, this one, this is the subtalar joint, okay? And it's a plain synovial joint. It's a basic one, plain synovial joint. And the action is basically inversion and eversion. Don't confuse it with the ankle joint. So the ankle joint will be on top. And the movement from the ankle joint will be plantar and dorsal uh, dorsiflexion, okay? Well, what about calcaneo cupoid joint that will be on the lateral surface between the calcaneus and the cuboid bone. Again, it's a plain synovial joint, and again, plays a role in inversion and eversion. 
That's why those are together. I would remember them together because they are both plane synovial joint and they are both um, uh, move with inversion and eversion. The TCN joint is talocalcaneo navicular joint, and this one is synovial bowl and socket joint. Okay, and it's between the head of the talus and the calcaneus and the vecular bone, and it makes some sort of gliding or rotatory movement. Okay, so as a completion, really, we call certain joint, a uh, certain part of the joint, at the mid tarsal. Uh, joint. So it's a, a joint literally in the middle of the tarsal bones. So it's a compound joint, two separate joints aligned transversely, and these are talonavicular joint of the talocalcaneo navicular joint and calcaneo cuboid. If you look here, it's basically this is the mid tarsal joint. Okay, so it's the talonavicular and calcaneo cuboid. Moving forward to the ankle joint, so what form the ankle joint? So you have the tibia with its process, just like that. And then you have the fibula with its malleable surface on the other side. And then you have the head of the talus, sort of like that. Okay, so this is the head of the talus. So you have the tibia, the fibula, and the head of the talus. And it is a synovial hinge joint. The actions could be plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So in terms of plantar flexion, Plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is basically definition of plantar flexion. If this is the foot, all right. If this is the foot, try to fix the leg and move this away from the body. All right. So this is plantar flexion and dorsiflexion is on the other side. So what causes plantar flexion? So it would be all the muscles in the posterior compartment of the leg, and that would be gastrocnemius, soleus, plantaris, and the tibialis posterior flexor halus longus and flexor digitorum longus, and they will come in to cover these muscles next. Dorsiflexion, it will be all the muscles from the anterior compartment, and that will be tibialis anterior and peroneus tertius, extensor halus longus, and extensor digitorum longus as well. Okay? So, well, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, we explained it on this diagram. You can demonstrate it on yourself. And which joint does this movement? It's the ankle joint and not, not the subtalar joint. Always remember that subtalar joint is mainly for uh, the N version and E version. All right, the N version and E version. Another question, which is, to be honest, I feel that this question is quite important. Why the ankle is more stable in dorsiflexion rather than plantar flexion? So I'll take you back to this lovely diagram. So, the anterior part of the talus, so the anterior part of the talus, okay, is the widest part of it. So, the anterior part is the widest part. And obviously, I drew this diagram for you that we have like sort of a mortise, okay. So, when the ankle is in dorsiflexion, when the ankle is in dorsiflexion, there will be sort of good alignment, right? There is no space, it's just like very well aligned and uh, it will be more stable, okay. So, uh, yeah, the anterior portion of the talus is wider and uh, than the posterior portion, so in dorsiflexion, the talus glides posteriorly, and the wider portion will fit in the ankle mortis. In plantar flexion, the talus moves anteriorly, and the other way around will happen. So moving on to the inferior talofibular joint, so it's obviously from the name, it's a uh, a joint between the tibu, sorry, this is tibu, not talu, so the inferior tibu uh, fibular joint. So the, it's a, basically a joint between the tibia and the fibula as well. So the type of this joint, it's a syndesmosis, okay, syndesmosis joint. There is a syndesmotic membrane in between, and it's at high risk of rupture or, em or, um, or damage um, with a fibular fracture, specifically Weber type C fracture. And then moving on to the tibia and its characteristics. So starting by this uh, lovely image for a patient with left uh, 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 tibia, as you can see from this side. So first of all, we need to identify which side is medial, which side is lateral. So you, when you have a very sharp uh, uh, side, this is usually the syndesmotic side. So this is the syndesmosis, meaning 
that will be the lateral side and again that will be the lateral side okay also we need to identify which is anterior and which is posterior usually from the top by knowing number 14 and number 14 is the tibial to prostate or tibial tubercle all right the tibial to prostate okay so basically the tibial to prostate so this is when where to identify the medial lateral and obviously the top from the bottom is easily identified you have that pyramid on top which is called intercondylar eminence intercondylar eminence and then we have two condyles we said this is intercondylar so you will have two condyles obviously you mentioned this is the lateral side and this is the medial side so number six will be the lateral condyle lateral tibial condyle number nine will be the medial tibial condyle okay and four is basically an impression for um, one of the muscles i believe i think a iliotibial tract impression i believe yeah so that is iliotibial tract impression on number four on the lateral side that's an iliotibial tract and on the other side you have number three in here on the posterior surface quite equivalent to that but this is for the semi tendinosis impression semi tendinosis and semi membranosis impression on the posterior surface you do have quite an important line in there there is a big line and a little bit rough number 12 is called the soleal line important for identifying the muscles and their origin you have obviously the five in the medial border and one in the anterior line and things like that but these are the main structures that you need to identify in the proximal tibia okay so moving forward so this is the tibia and the fibula as well and uh, you have the articulation between them four is the head of the fibula and one you're still in the head but this is the apical part of the head and 12 we're talking about the joint the superior uh, um, uh, joint articulation the superior uh, tibial fibular uh, joint as well okay moving forward to identify the structures in here obviously eight is the lateral condyle this is the lateral condyle and we know one from before and four from before this is basically the head of fibula and one is just the apex of the head of fibula and two is the articular surface on the fibula two is the articular surface on the fibula and this is for the tibio fibular uh, uh, joint and obviously the superior tibio fibular joint this is the lower end you have here this is the medial malleolus and obviously that would be the lateral malleolus and that would be the inferior joint and this is the facet for articulation in the ankle joint with the talus okay with the talus great following this i'm going to demonstrate the um part of the femur uh, as you can see here from the question you don't really need to know in detail uh, everything about the femur but um we're gonna know the important structures mainly so you have here obviously that will be the left femur and the reason why you can see it to so the lesser trochanter kind of looks a little bit posterior and the head you're going to make it medial so that is a medial side that is a lateral side and that is posterior because the uh, 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 lesser trochanter kind of is uh, should be posterior so one starting by this eight is the lesser trochanter kind of and three is the greater trochanter kind of, okay and you have five which is a big crest between the two trochanters kind of. it's called enter trochanteric crest and this is not intertrochanteric line because intertrochanteric line usually from the front so you are in the back so that will be intertrochanteric crest instead intertrochanteric crest four four is basically the head and 11 is the neck and 12 is something called the quadrate tubercle quadrate tubercle and this is for quadratus femoralis and here you have the trochanteric fossa trochanteric fossa as well so this is the head and um looking here so nine you have the spiral line spiral line which is number line nine so nine is the spiral line 
Yeah, I think we covered the main important structures. Uh, maybe uh, the muscles attached to the greater trochanter, uh, and it's quite important to remember that. So it's a gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus and pyriformis muscle and obturator externus and obturator internus as well, right? And we're going to read about all these muscles uh, later on, okay? So lesser trochanter it contains the iliosoas muscle, and um, it's basically two muscle, which is the iliacus and the psoas major muscle. Quadrature we call it. it's four quadratus femoris muscle. Okay, this is why we need to identify from one to ten. So one is sort of a depression in the head, which is called the fuvia. Three obviously is the head. Six is the neck of again the left femur. And two is the greater trochanter, which contains gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and pyriformis, and obturator externus, and obturator internus muscle as well. Um, and here, as you can see, we're looking here from the front, okay? And the reason why, because the lesser trochanter looks a little bit posterior as well. So four would be the intertrochanteric. Now we're talking about a line and not a crest. Okay, enter to recanteric line. And looking from the back in here, so six is the enter to recanteric crest, and 11 is the trochanteric fossa. Okay, 11 is the trochanteric fossa as well. Great, so we do have um, the fuvia, we talked about it, and the greater trochanter, and we talked about the head, and the trochanteric line, and the crest, and the lesser trochanter, and neck. Uh, pectineal line is number seven. I'm not sure if we covered it. Yeah, this is pectineal line is number seven. And number eight is the quadrate tubercle for quadratus femoris muscle. We talked about the spiral line, maybe line of the shaft of the, um, the femur, the left femur. Okay, moving forward, that's the distal end. So the distal end, I will know whether major or lateral side by this small protrusion which is called a doctor tubercle, a doctor tubercle. So that will tell me that this is the medial side. So looking at the eight, that's the medial condyle. Nine, it's sort of an epicondyle, and that will be supracondylar ridge. Okay, 11 is the patellar surface, patellar surface, and five is the lateral condyle, and six is the lateral epicondyle as well. And seven, obviously, the lateral supracondylar ridge. Supracondylar ridge. Twelve is the popliteal fossa. Popliteal fossa. And ten is the supracondylar ridge on the other side. Okay? So these are the structures on this side. So this is the supracondylar ridge. We talked about one, which is the doctor tubercle. Okay? And... You know, the line is the epicondyle, and our doctor tubercle is obviously medial, and this is the epicondyle, which is the medial epicondyle. Okay, so these are the structures in this side. Um, a quite important diagram, we don't have to remember everything in detail in here, just the important structures. So, one is called a doctor brevis muscle, and uh, two is a doctor longus muscle and three is gluteus uh, maximus muscle all right uh, but where is gluteus medius and gluteus uh, minimus remember i think four will be gluteus medius and minimus will be somewhere in here as well okay because this is the gt okay but the gluteus maximus does not go to the gt the greater trochanter 11 is the lesser to uh, trochanter and that has the um, iliopsoas muscle, iliopsoas muscle. Okay, so looking here, we talked about one as a doctor previs, and two as a doctor uh, magnus. Sorry, that's magnus or longus. Okay, gluteus maximus is number three. Four and five is medius, and five is the gluteus minimus. All right, and gluteus minimus on the greater trochanter. And uh, we talked about um, iliopsoas muscle and no quadratus femoris muscle.
uh, moving on to the final part of the bone of the lower limb, uh, we're going to end with the uh, hip bone. And as you can see here, uh, this is a uh, quite big uh, bone, which is uh, originally formed of three different bones, which is uh, the ilium, uh, which is the whole part like that. This is the ilium, and you have the ischium or the ischium, which is this one, and then the pupus, which is what's left. They combine together and form a single bone, which has quite important structures that we're going to go through them now. So starting from the ilium, on the top of the ilium we have number 10, which is called the iliac crest. So this is the iliac crest. And here you have a tubercle, so iliac tubercle. Okay, And then you have um, a spine in here, another spine in here, another spine in here, and another spine in here, and even one more spine in here. So starting, this is anterior superior iliac spine, this is anterior inferior iliac spine, this is posterior superior iliac spine, there is posterior inferior iliac spine, and finally this is called the ischial or the ischial spine. Okay, well, the ischial spine defined this big notch into two notch, which is this is called the greater sciatic notch, and this is called lesser sciatic notch. Great, right. we have three important lines on the ilium, which is called uh, gluteal lines, and they represent the origin of the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus. So starting by number 21, this is the posterior gluteal line. And behind it, so all this area, will be the origin for the gluteus maximus muscle. Right? And um, this line is called the um, anterior gluteal line and for all the muscle in this area that would be gluteus medius muscle and finally you have an inferior gluteal line and for a muscle from here to there that would be gluteus minimus muscle it's quite important for origin of the gluteal muscles and obviously we're here from the outer surface. Number two is the acetabulum, 26 as you can see here. This is the acetabular rim and one is an acetabular tubercle. 19 is, so 19 is an obturator foramen. Okay, an obturator foramen. You have here, this is the ischial spine. So that's an ischial spine, and that's a pubic ramus. Sorry, this is an ischial ramus, and this is a pubic ramus. They come together and form a joint. This is the pubic tubercle, and this is the um, pubic crest as well, and 27. So these are the structures of the hip bone in detail. Thank you, everyone. We'll continue with muscles on the next video. Thank you.